Hi everyone, this is Jerry3904 on the MS Linux forum. I'm here with a with a video on the using the new Ragu2 on the Raspberry Pi official display. We're going to have a three part section here, a quick setup on hardware, what I'm actually using, a section on the basic use of, of Ragu2 on the Raspberry Pi, and a section on advanced use. My big change was to move the secure digital part outside. I didn't want to have to disassemble the unit just to change operating systems, for instance during development, or if I wanted to test something else. I found this extender and removed the back, co the back cover to us to uh, assemble it. This, is, this end will go underneath the Pi 4, into that little slot that's there and this will curl out. So here comes the yellow ribbon from below. That's the video ribbon, the display ribbon. It comes up alongside and up over the outside edge. Notice that I've punched out the hole so that I can, it made it easier to change the secure digital chip when I needed to. Here it is assembled. Uh, now the back cover has been snapped back on. The yellow ribbon is coming from below and up over, and it's attached to the back uh, cover with a, with a double-sided uh, sticky pad that comes with the unit. There's a, a CD ready to go, uh, SD ready to go, and uh, finally notice that I got a right-angled USB-C connector adapter so that I didn't have to see the uh, cords coming out the top. I also added these two bumpers to the underneath the bottom edge to raise the viewing angle because I couldn't see very well. And then with a cup of coffee I'm all set to go and we'll dive in. So here we are at the default desktop. You will have see you recognize this from the what we've been showing for videos for quite a while now. This is the Fluxbox side and the Fluxbox side is optimized for user-friendly touchscreen use. You can always use the open box side if you don't want, if you don't need things like panels or docks or any of that, then you can just go bare bones on that side. But I'm going to focus on the flux box side. Uh, you can use the screen you see, but if you, the more you started to use it, you would find, I think as we have, that it's inconvenient, it's slow, and it crowds the space. It's not a very big display and we want to maximize the space we have available. So the recommended, what we're recommending is that you begin by hiding all sorts of unnecessary elements. Uh, you've seen me do this before I think, but I'll do it again. I'm going to do a long press on the screen, get out of sight here, toggle the conky to get it gone, do the same thing, out of, out of sight, toggle the uh, auto hide the dock, get it out of sight, one more time out of sight, get the desktop icons out of sight. Okay now we've cleared off that site, that's good. Um, the panel is created with the same software we've been talking about called Tint2 and we're going to use that software to get rid of this panel, which isn't very convenient, and bring up one that we think is much better and a dock. So I'm going to click on the wrench to bring up the settings manager. And I could use the scroll bar, but I'll use three fingers to scroll down. There it is, the Tint2 manager. Bring up the Tint2 manager expand that so I can see it and here I can use one finger this uh, various windows have various behaviors I'm going to turn off what we are currently using and I'm going to turn on the touch screen dock and the touch screen panel there I go panel and dock and click apply to get that to take care, up care of itself and now I can close this and close this and we have um, we're using the correct uh, the correct uh, items we want to do. So one more thing to clear, to simplify things. This beautiful desk uh, wallpaper is very noisy on a small screen. So I'm going to change that. Go to long press here. Uh, go to appearance. Uh, wallpaper select. Uh, so let's see. What do you like? Uh, let's pick. Um, this is very nice. I'll take that one. 
and that should be it. This is called three cubes. It's very nice with an MX flux box. And so now we have this and we are uh, good to go. Okay, we have the uh, basic setup the way we want to. We have the dock and the panel uh, auto hiding with a little bar that was big enough to catch it with our finger, which makes it nice. And um, we want to take a look at what we can do with this at this point. Now, the first thing that I find very important because I use Fluxbox and Openbox a lot is that we have the desktop right click that opens up the static menu. Uh, this, these are static because this is, if you install a new application it doesn't show on here, nothing changes. It does show on the main uh, detailed menu, XFCE4's App Finder. That's a very nice big dynamic menu. menu. So the static menu, it works very well with that. Um, we can, uh, uh, so a desktop right click works well inside an application. We'll take a look at that inside an application. It's much more variable, depends on the um, inside a window, depends on what the window is. So I can, uh, let me, let, let's take a look at some of the basic, nah, wrong one. Let's do that again. I got fat fingers. Here's the basic music player. It's the excellent dead beef. And I just launched it obviously with a single uh, click. I can close it with a single click if once I hit that X, which is a little bit hard for me with my big fingers. I can, if it's, if it's, I can move it by putting, dragging on the title bar, not too fast. Um, if it's, if it, if the application is using the MX Comfort style, not all of them are, then the lower right and left hand corner have a, have a, a little blue bar that you can easily hit with your finger and resize. So that's nice. Uh, you can't go, if you, if you miss it, things get a little weird. Um, and finally, uh, something that's very useful on Openbox that does not have a panel is you can double tap the title bar and shade it, it's calling. And this is nice on Openbox. I actually use it on Fluxbox as well because on Openbox you can stack up these shaded applications on a second workspace and then you can retrieve them at any point very easily. So that's those are the instantly available um, activities that we have with a single finger. Very nice, helpful. Now what about scrolling? Because that's always kind of an interesting question. Um, well, in a, some simple text files you can scroll with one finger. And interestingly enough, in Chromium, if I open up, say, for instance, the latest news, in Chromium, then I can scroll on this page, probably depends on what page you're on, I can scroll on this with a single finger. And that's that's actually nice to know. I've not tested it on all websites, but it's very handy to know. Two fingers, I already showed you that, but let me show you again. Open up the Settings Manager. Always takes a minute to fire up. And a one finger isn't gonna work, nothing happens. But two fingers, work very well. I can scroll with two fingers and uh, that's nice. I've also got a, a toolbar over there and there are some some windows that tolerate two finger scrolling. And then there's uh, there are some a few that require scroll bar to get anywhere. The most uh, the most obvious one, the most one that we deal most with is is Thunar, the file manager. Thunar is a wonderful file manager. I hit two buttons. It's a wonderful file manager, but it's not great for the touch screen. And I'll actually look at that in the advanced use section coming up. But uh, you can, uh, if you can't scroll, uh, well, I need to, I need to, let me go to the file system here. Here we go. Now, now I can't scroll on this. It just, well, today I can. Normally I can't scroll when there's files in there, but we have it set up so that there's a very big um, scroll bar over here uh, that's defined in a CSS file in the hidden config file in your home. 
And that helps a lot. And so most of the time on tuner, I think that's the first time one finger ever worked for me. Most of the time you're going to have to use the scroll bar to do what you want to do. Okay, that's that's it. That's a lot of activity you can do uh, just right off the bat. You have to get used to it. Uh, I, at least I find with large fingers that I need to get used to it. But now we're going to turn to the advanced use. Okay, for the last section, we want to turn to some advanced use for uh, the touch screen, something that goes beyond sort of a little bit of every day. I'm going to touch on four uh, questions, four suggestions. One is that you actually set up a touchscreen user dedicated for uh, that using MX user. Secondly, I'm going to suggest that you switch file managers. Third, that you switch terminals and then point to some of the config files to figure out what we're doing. Okay, so the first advanced use that I'm going to propose is that you make use of uh, the MX User Manager to create a dedicated user for the touchscreen. It's a lot easier that way because then any changes you make for the touchscreen, we've had to make some, can stay in place for that user that you create, but the other, your normal user on the monitor would, would be able to keep that person's um, that person's cho choices and such things. For instance, the conky, you might want the conky on the monitor, but not on the touchscreen. So as an example, we're going to use uh, MX's uh, user manager to create a new manager. User manager MX has a lot of power. So I've already got it open here. I'll plop it open. Uh, and I've already signed in with Pi's password. Now we're going to create a new uh, a new um, user. I'm going to I don't like typing very many letters, so I'm going to call him Touch T O U C H. But then I'm just going to put T Touch Screen T S for the password. Touch Screen T S for the password. Pull this up so I can apply it. user was added okay okay so that's all we would do and uh, what we now could do we've done this here but then you could simply log out click on touch and boot, uh, log back into the account for, for touch and that'd be a dedicated user so that's a pretty handy way of going about it the second thing has to do with changing the file manager you've already seen that we can use Tunar which is which is there by default on the on the image but it's awkward a lot of things don't work and uh, I'm going to recommend that you uh, substitute something called ZZZFM which is in the MX repos and it wasn't available when we were developing this uh, for this whole RAGU2 but it is available now and it's been adjusted for um, MX Linux and I'm going to show it to you. I put it into my my root menu so I wouldn't have to fool around uh, file manager. And there it is. The nice thing about this is that it's very well behaved and all sorts of things work that don't work. For instance, if I do a long press on a file, I actually get it. I disappear because I hit it again, but I'll get a um, I'll get a menu. I can, for instance, also see hidden files, which I can't do. Panel one view. Um, sorry. Panel one, panel one view, and show hidden files. And now I see these hidden files that I would do. So there's a lot of things that it can do that Thunar cannot do. So I recommend this. It's called ZZZFM File Manager. It was originally de developed by an Antix uh, person named Skidoo. It's he who's a very good programmer. So, so far for that. Now uh, let's talk about the the uh, terminal uh, in the in the main Ragu2 XFCE's wonderful terminal is installed. But it doesn't work very well here. It's it won't keep. It's hard to put it in a single place. Uh, it has a lot of things that don't work very well. 
but we already have another one installed called just an X term. It's a very simple, very simple uh, monitor. Uh, and uh, it's something that it, it does all sorts of things right. I, again, I did this to make my, make my life easy. So here, here is uh, that X terminal and it's small. Wherever you put it, it will come back up there. Whatever size you do, it'll hold that size so the next time you launch it. I'll show you that, bring up the terminal. Now it's got that size. So those are already two very useful features that are not available in uh, not available in XFCE. So I recommend it's a lot easier. I recommend that you substitute, if not X term, then ROX term, one of those other monitors that you like that will uh, work better on a touch screen. So that was number three. Uh, uh, finally, we wanted to say there are a lot of config files and uh, people say, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. But uh, it's, they're all, they're laid out in the documentation in the first couple of pages. Uh, and if you're interested, take a look at that. Now that we have a file manager that we can see hidden files with, I'll show you a couple. Let's show, we were just on this, I'll scroll down. We were out, there's XVKBD. So this is, this is the config file for the desktop. It's very simple, but you can change uh, fa factors that you want here if you need to. It's very helpful. And Xterm, I just did there. There's Xterm control. There's the config file for Xterm. Or let's go up to config itself. Um, and although we're not using it, we'll use. We'll take a look at Rofi, which is that uh, all apps figure. And I've actually done something helpful here, you'll see. Um, is This is the config file here. There's a lot that you can do here. The bottom line tells you what skin you want on it. Uh, it this is the setup I have. I lowered this to 10 so it would fit on the, on the touchscreen screen. And I added the word window, comma window here, because that means that then Rofi can be used as a, as a, to switch desktops easily if you want to. So that's those are the kinds of things that I'm interested in. By the way, this is a this is a uh, single text file, so we can uh, save changes, discard changes. Thank you. So those are some examples of what um, I mean by taking a look at the config files if you're going to be doing more advanced use. All right, that's it. I wanted to show you the touch screen with, with Ragu2 running on top of it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this and learned something and we'll see you around.